floor, I get high More than I drop is the more I get low The music is lifting me up again, so Show me a tune like a nod to Bro, I'm just in the rules I'm for the fire and the fuel When I'm packing the punch and it's knocking my track And I'm not turning back on that Hi, I'm Kevin from Brooklyn Hardscape and welcome uh, to my freezing garage uh, in sunny Seattle, which actually isn't very sunny right now. Uh, it's pretty pretty cold, uh, even though Seattle is a northern city, the temperatures are in the teens right now. My garage is in the lower 30s, uh, which is no good for what we're about to do. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be using thermoplastics and because it's so cold in here, uh, they will harden fast, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge. I got invited to uh, do a demo at the Aquarium Club of Pasco County. Uh, it's in Florida, and uh, I thought this would be a good opportunity to, to utilize one of our services, uh, which is building hardscape and uh, shipping it. It's been a lot of fun. We've been doing it uh, for the past year and a half. Uh, we even had some clients ask us to get the plants or moss or whatever, we ha whatever have you uh, going, and then we, we also will ship it that way. Uh, we have a reserve tank for that. Um, this event was, uh, is, excuse me, uh, sponsored by Ultim Nature Systems. Uh, they're, they're always pretty great. This isn't the first event that they've sponsored. Uh, and I'm pretty excited. So UNS sent us a nice little pile of uh, small spider wood, which I'm pretty excited about. I love, I used to hate spider wood. I think I used to have like, refuse to carry it in, in my shop but uh now now that we have it i especially like right now it we let it soak for a week in a tank filled with shrimp and it got all the mold and then you know it's pretty much cured so you know wh whatever happens with this you're not going to go through that whole mold, mold stage which is very exciting but the best part about spider wood is a it's pretty hard and b it's really great to build uh hardscape with it's strong it's really hard to break so you have to cut it but once it's put together, it will stay together. Uh, you get very little expansion, so you know once once I do what I do, um, you won't you have just a tiny bit of expansion, which will help cement things together. But most importantly, uh, it won't uh, degrade very fast. So this hardscape should last about a year before things start breaking apart. Nine months to a year is I, I normally guarantee up to six. But uh, spider wood used to hate it. Now I love it. Uh, it's really great to, to basically make wood sculptures with. So that's really great. Thank you, uh, UNS. Uh, we also got the Delta 30, which is a great uh, canister filter. I use uh, two of these in the studio. They're, they're pretty reliable, easy to clean. Uh, I really like them a lot. Uh, thank you again for sending this. The club is really going to appreciate it. They also sent the Twin Star 45B, which is a uh, really, really uh, surprisingly great uh, budget light. Uh, I'm also using this uh, for a tank right now. Uh, big fan. Uh, it's affordable, but not quite the great color that normal Twin Star lights have, but it's still good color and it grows the crap out of plants. We also got sent. UNS Classic 45 angle cut uh, tank. It's a 45U. It's about nine gallons, a little over nine gallons. Uh, I love this tank. Uh, I like weird shaped tanks, but this one is really great. I'm a huge fan. Uh, it's just a really good size to do an aquascape. For me, I think that the best aquascapes aren't in big tanks, they're in small tanks. Uh, but 10 gallon, 10, around 10 gallon tanks are really fantastic. I'm really excited. Uh, for this tank and what's important is that uh, we have this tank uh, before it goes to the club which I'll explain in a second uh, so yeah I mean one of my favorite tanks is this tank uh, so because I'm going to be building a wood structure and then putting an aquarium that will immediately be auctioned off uh, I, I don't want the wood to fall away I don't want all this hard work to fall apart so I'm, as I'm building uh, the wood structure, it's going to fit into the stone. And then once I get to the demo, I will be uh, attaching uh, the wood structure to the lava stone, which is Icelandic lava stone, which is also a UNS product that I, that's from my shop. So 
So now that I've gotten the background, or at least the basics of it done, I'm gonna start working on the foreground, which should take me a couple of days. And it's gonna be pretty interesting. Uh, it's gonna be very, very close to the glass. Uh, it's gonna create a lot of contrast with the background. And the idea is to force perspective. If you go to my website, to Aquascaping 101, uh, it's one of the things that I talk about. Uh, but having a lot of texture and shadow in the foreground or creating a framing, uh, you're going to make it seem like the tank is deeper than it is. This is particularly important when you're having small tanks that you want to look deeper. And if you're going to be using it as a competition tank or, you know, something that you want to post a lot of, this will help. So I'm going to be uh, making it out of uh, thermoplastic more thermoplastic. Uh, if you go to the hospital and you break your arm, uh, what they do now is they take a thermoplastic sheet and they form it to your arm. And uh, that's how you get cast these days or any kind of uh, medical procedure that requires you to uh, keep an, a limb, for instance, uh, immobile. So that's what I'm using. It's a hospital grade thermoplastic sheet. It's got holes in it. But in the center, I'm using an artificial substrate uh, it's recycled plastic. Uh, it's kind of new in the market with this particular brand. Uh, the terrarium hobby has been using things that are similar. And I created a seam that goes along. And this seam is going to be where the epiphytes that I'm going to be using in the foreground uh, will be planted. Uh, I have found in my experience that the moment that epiphytes get anything from Buca philandria or ferns or nubius, as soon as they're able to actually root into something, not just hang out with the roots in the water column, uh, they grow healthier and better. I get less hole in the leaf. And being that this is a hydroponic uh, material, it's designed to absorb nutrients that the plants can later feed on, just like aqua soil. I'm pretty excited about this process. I've been working on it for the past year and a half. Uh, and it's a way that I'm able to cut down on material use and do things that you just can't do with wood that you can buy that's affordable. Uh, you can absolutely get wood that looks like what I'm about to build, uh, but $30 worth of small spider wood versus uh, getting a big piece or spending weeks or months or however long looking for the right piece of wood, it just isn't worth it when you can just build it. Being I'm using thermoplastic with a, with a lighter colored wood, it's also going to create some pretty cool grains, which I'm excited about, and you won't really be able to appreciate uh, until the wood ages a little bit, you get a little, a little bit of the wood gets eaten away by time, and then you'll get some nice grooves. If you're somebody like me that likes to recycle materials until there's just nothing left, uh, you can actually reuse the thermoplastic. You can melt the sheet down and then make it up in little balls and, and start all over again with a different project. So as much as people like not like using this, this is a, a reusable uh, material. And it also enables you to use uh, materials over and over again in a much more efficient uh, way. Uh, spray foam, for instance, uh, I, I, I've tried to use it multiple times. I had a friend who was like, oh, you just leave it out in the sun and the spray foam just peels right off. It does not. I've seen this advice repeated over and over again. And the aquarium safe stuff just never comes off. Uh, and you'll have little bits of spray foam forever. And I hate it, and this is just much easier to use a heat gun or even a hair dryer, and you can just peel it right off. It's really the way to go. It's uh, better than super glue. Even though I do use some super glue, I find that I'm using minute amounts of super glue compared to what I used to. It's 100 times stronger than super glue or even reef putty. Uh, because what you're doing is when you're using it, you're not just uh, adhering it to something, you're creating a mold uh, where all the joints are. And this is really important because it really does, if you do it well, uh, things just won't move. Uh, some stones are a little resistant. Uh, for instance, uh, zero stone, uh, it's a little bit harder to work with. Uh, you really have to do some other tricks, but uh, really this is the superior uh, aquascaping adhesive. So the first step of building this tree trunk is that I'm going to score it. If you looked, uh, I used uh, a Dremel and I put in scoring marks, which are a little bit hard to see, but they're very light, barely uh, deep at all. Like I can just put my fingernail on them. The reason why I do this is that it is a smooth surface and we're going to be applying a liquid that hardens and it'll need something to grip. Uh, this will help create a secure surface. It's the easiest and most efficient way to do it. You can just add the thermoplastic and it will, uh, because it's so hot, create a bond, but it's 
not as strong as putting in some grooves. So that's always first step after you make the sleeve. Uh, score it so it has something to, to grip onto. Uh, pretty simple, it only took me a little bit of time. But now here comes the really, really tedious part, which is actually doing the construction. And I'm definitely gonna time lapse this. So we've reached about a critical point. It's about two thirds of the way through. I've gotten the majority of the wood done. Now I can't add any more because we're gonna start adding sticks and overlays. Excuse me, and this is really important to really get everything smooth now because I won't be able to get it in there, like get in there later. So what we're about to do now is I'm gonna sand it down and make it look more like a tree trunk because right now it's um, very, very choppy. So we'll smooth it out, bring out some grains, and uh, then we're gonna add the final pieces of wood. And then when we're done that, uh, we're gonna cut here, probably at this angle. Uh, this is where it's gonna be mounted onto the lava stone so it doesn't float away. I'm really into this piece. Uh, it's gonna hit the water line. A little bit's gonna come out, and then as soon as it hits the water line, it's gonna angle right down. It's gonna create some nice reflections here. And with uh, the Anubius and Buca Philandria like growing along here and creating more shadow, it's gonna be a really nice curved experience. Um, this is just take, it's taken me a while. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty dedicated for this. I don't normally do this for free, but uh, I really like Grant who invited me down uh, to Florida. So I'm trying to do a really good job. And it gives me an opportunity to share what I've been working on. So this is this is it so far. Hopefully I don't uh, I don't mess it up. It's still really cold in my garage. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but you can see my breath. So we really worked it down a bunch. Uh, I found some weak spots, which is another reason to sand it down and like secure everything. I kind of guessed where they were, and I was right mostly. But as you can see, now that I cleaned it off, it's got some nice grain. Everything's a little smoother. It definitely looks more like a tree now. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. And so now adding the, the final details is uh, the next step. And it's gonna be a couple of hours. Um, it's kind of late, so I'm gonna try to push through, but this is almost finished. And I think it's gonna look really, really nice in the skate. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. In the flow, I get high. More than I drop is the more I get low. The music is lifting me up again, so show me a tune I can nod to. Bro, I'm testing the rules.